This is AACPS Digest with Monika Monk. Hello and welcome to the Anne Arundel County Public Schools Digest, bringing you news about the people and programs of Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Remonstrance. R-E-M-O-N-S-T-R-A-N-C-E. -E. Correct. After 13 rounds of exciting competition, St. Mary's Elementary School 8th grader William Rogers outlasted 27 other students to win the 27th annual Anne Arundel County Spelling Bee. Finishing in second place was Alyssa Hall of Annapolis Area Christian School. Three spellers tied for third place, Anna Patterson of Annapolis Middle School, Story Kulinich Irvin of the Chesapeake Bay Home School Association, and Isabel Simmons of the School of the Incarnation. The B is a partnership of Anne Arundel County Public Schools and the 21st Century Education Foundation. This year's event sponsor was the Josephine B. Scheffenacher Education Trust. William will represent Anne Arundel County at the 2015 Scripps National Spelling Bee in May. School Superintendent Dr. George Arlotto, along with other guests, recently surprised five deserving county school educators as he announced this year's Teacher of the Year finalists by popping into their classrooms with celebratory gifts. Iris Crankfield of South River High School, Kristen Duffy of Bodkin Elementary School, Jenny Merrill of Severna Park Elementary School, Christine McAllister of Mead Middle School, and Meredith Claiborne of Broadneck Elementary School were chosen from a talented group of 41 county public school educators. And really it's just very exciting. It's a surprise for them to be, to be one of the finalists. Um, and it really just emphasizes um, uh, not only their excitement for the work that they do, um, but for the process. And, and it's great to just celebrate teaching and learning. It celebrates the teachers, not only the one who has been selected as the finalist, but also the ones that are in the building that teach with them. It's, it's a great way to be able to, in some small way, recognize the great work that's being done by all of our teachers in our schools. Gratified to simply be nominated, each teacher was humbled and pleased to share the news with their students and praise with their colleagues. As teachers, we do what we love, and we don't expect the recognition for it, but it's very nice, and I am blessed to work in such a great school with great kids and great families, um, great colleagues that we're a team and we really work together. So this is all a team effort, really, and I'm very humbled. I feel like it's been my gift to um, inspire children, and uh, I'm very grateful and, and so happy and honored. The real reward for me so far has been students coming back and telling me what impact I have on them, because you don't know as they're going through to be honest um, but to be able to communicate with them as adults and to know the impact that I've had on them has been very rewarding and, and to be honest all the reward I've needed. I'm so excited I just achieved national boards in November so like to be from <laughs> to go from national boards to teacher of the year it's the year I was, I'm so this year has been fantastic. <laughs> Using hands-on um, curriculum and technology and um, creative Fun ideas is going to make learning fun for the kids and more exciting, and I want to continue that route. The 2015 Anne Arundel County Teacher of the Year will be announced, and all of the teachers will be honored at the 29th Annual Excellence in Education Award Ceremony at the BWI Marriott Hotel in Linthicum. The event is hosted annually by the Annapolis and Anne Arundel County Chamber of Commerce in partnership with Anne Arundel County Public Schools. The winner will also represent Anne Arundel County at the State Teacher of the Year competition later this year. Nine students from Broadneck, Severna Park, and South River High Schools have been honored with awards from the Anne Arundel Medical Center's James and Sylvia Earle Simulation to Advance Innovation Learning, or SAIL, Center for their extraordinary work during their internships this year at the center. Broadneck High students Allison Hannes and Paxton Paganelli and Severna Park High School students Sophie Hoekstra, Hannah Krauss, Abby Mandenblatt and Ellie Twig and Sean Yang recently received certificates of recognition for their outstanding effort and dedication in facilitating the annual American Urogynecologic Society International Urogynecological Association Fellow Surgical Workshop last July. I've gotten the chance to meet so many medical professionals and really see what it's like to work in a hospital and going forward I know now kind of more what I want to do with my life. I know that maybe the clinic 
life isn't for me, but I know that I really do enjoy working um, in healthcare and that I would like to pursue that in the future. The medical experience has been amazing. Uh, some of the things that we're able to, some of the things we're able to do, uh, you don't really see until you're at least in, maybe in college, but definitely at, in medical school. So these cadaver labs that we do with different fellow surgeons and, and different medical professionals are really an amazing experience. At the workshop, the students performed a variety of activities in support of national and international teams of doctors learning and practicing new surgical procedures. Also, South River High students Megan Rutkai and Miranda Forbes were honored with a $1,000 cash award from the Society of American Gastrointestinal and Endoscopic Surgeons for their video public service announcement encouraging doctors to take online courses from the Sales Center for Surgical Recertification. The process was extremely fast. This was our first video making experience, so we had to learn quickly how to write a script, how to develop the concept. And then we had to learn how to film, we had to learn how to use the camera even. And I edited the full video, and that took hours, but it was such a fun process. We did this in under a week, almost. We learned so much, though. We learned editing, writing, and filming. It was a very rewarding experience. The students beat out national competition that included practicing physicians and medical students. Three county students were recently honored for their visual arts talent as Governor Larry Hogan, Maryland First Lady Hogan, and Comptroller Peter Francho celebrated their Maryland Masters Award-winning artwork. The future of the state's economy is dependent upon merging technology with creativity. This is a creative component, and these young artists are so talented, I believe that they'll be called on in the future economy of the state to be full-fledged participants. They could be artists in and of themselves, but I think they'll be major players in the economy, so it's a recognition of their talent. It's incredible to see the work of the children. It's a great program in Anne Arundel County, and uh, you can tell that the administrators, the teachers, the parents, and, and these students are just incredible, the amount of effort they put in. Based on the notion that thriving economic growth and bustling arts and culture are often intertwined, the Comptroller presented the awards to Shavela Bell of Glen Burnie High School, Beta Vining of Severn River Middle School, and Gannon Cope of Broadneck Elementary School to celebrate Maryland's achievements and innovations through the arts. During the ceremony, the Comptroller discussed the importance of arts education. Well, it lets you express yourself, especially if you're like a quiet, shy person like I am. So you can just show that through visual instead of having to speak about your feelings. This piece was actually a turning point in um, my life because I was, I was afraid that if I wasn't going into a math or a science or technology field that I wouldn't have a future. So this is where I realized that because art is passionate to me, I can go into it and, I, and that's what this piece is to me. I just like to like make stuff and like collate stuff and like show people it and then they sometimes like really like it. Each student's artwork will be displayed in the Comptroller's Annapolis office for about two months. Schwarz and Weiss. The AACPS Office of Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, or STEM, recently held the second German STEM Immersion Day at North County High School, where elementary, middle, and high school students deepened their understanding of German culture and language while participating in various activities. In the workshop, we have a high school student, a middle school student, and an elementary school student all working together on the same project, so like that, that rich vertical teaming, so that the the it allows the high school kids to show that they actually have learned some German and then the, the younger kids, like, that they can understand it and they can be successful in speaking German too. This kind of combination of two different fields of STEM and then also German, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I've never seen anything like it and it really is crossing boundaries in science because in science you have to be able to communicate with your peers and German is really opening that possibility and when you have that possibility of communicating with your peers more effectively and talking to more people about your science that's when true innovation happens. The event was a successful collaboration between Overlook Elementary School, Lindale Middle School, North County High School, the Johns Hopkins University and the Valsi German Language Village. The Valsi German Language Village annually awards two North County High School students scholarships to study German in the summer. We partner with schools uh, to uh, tell people about the program, uh, have kids come join us in the summer. It's a way to enhance their German beyond the school learning for kids who don't take German at school. It's a way to learn in the summer. 
and uh, we're really pleased to offer two scholarships uh, to North County High School uh, and the STEM program here combined with German to our STEM German immersion program. So high school kids come from around the country and in four weeks in our program they get the equivalent of a year's worth of German and it's all using STEM skills. So science, hands-on science project, engineering, technology, math, the way the Germans speak math. Uh, and it, by four weeks in our program, it's a whole year's worth of German. When I first started doing this, I thought it was all about drugs and alcohol. But I realized very early on it was so much more than that. With the weight of the heroin epidemic affecting our community, nearly 800 teens from eight county high schools were recently inspired by former National Basketball Association player Chris Heron, who spoke about his life, his career, and the damage done by his own addiction to alcohol and drugs, including heroin. Try to convey to them that it's okay to share your struggle, it's okay to ask for help, and it's okay to, to change. And I think they walk in initially thinking it's just another drug talk, and I think they walk out thinking about where they're at in their life and, and what they can do. I feel like drugs are like a problem everywhere around the, like in the country and some other places because uh, people get hooked onto it and they can ruin lives. Like the story about to listen to, he ruined his life. He is going, he's going to be a big man and now he's, now he's back on, like, on the bottom because of a drug. Through his foundation, the Heron Project, Heron aims to increase education and public awareness about the dangers of substance abuse. I think our kids, it's really hard for them to identify with a heroin overdose um, at 15 years old. But I think it's okay for them to identify with the, the heroin overdose that started drinking in the woods or in the basement where the parents said it's safe. All you can say is no, and they keep trying to, to tell you, no, you just gotta walk away from the situation. Um, you just gotta be the bigger person. Um, I think it's like a popularity thing, honestly. Like people just try to be cool and fit in, so that's the easiest way. My final moment, um, my last day that uh, that I used, um, someone told me to play dead. You know, they said I should walk away from my kids and and pretend that uh, that I had died, so so they could live, sacrifice myself. Um, but uh, you know, rock bottom is is it can be at any time. And, and I wish I didn't wait so long before, before I recognized that. The event was made possible by the financial and conscious efforts of high school principals Jason Williams of Northeast High School and Jim Todd of Old Mill High School, who are determined to have a meaningful impact on the lives and futures of young people beyond the classroom. United States Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan, in conjunction with the National Parent Teacher Association, recently hosted a town hall meeting with a cadre of county parents and educators. All of us as taxpayers have an educational and a financial, but I would say a moral responsibility to make sure our dollars are making a difference. Are we closing achievement gaps or are we not? Are we raising the bar or are we not? Are less students needing remedial classes or are they not? If we can't answer those questions, if it's just sort of left to uh, to you know, goodwill or our, our hope, um, I think our kids in our country deserve something better than that. While Common Core and Park assessments were part of the discussion, the meeting served to give a voice to parents and educators on a national level. Well, as parent advocates, we need to stay focused and united in our efforts to make sure we put the pressure on what we need to, to make a difference in our children's lives. Thank you for watching Anne Arundel County Public Schools Digest on AACPS-TV.